How can the in industry encourage young American riders to become proficient at working with young horses? At EAP, we had lots and lots of presentations from veterinary to uh, farriers and sports psychologists, but I kind of felt the one thing that was missing was a presentation on how to work with young horses and a presentation on breeding. And it would have made a huge difference if we had a presentation from, say, Alex or Diane, who could come to us and talk about how they bring up their young horses or how they make their breeding decisions. And that just would have given us so much information where we have these amazing individuals in our industry who have so much knowledge to share, but it's just not getting there. And we need a way for it to get transferred. Um, so I definitely think there should be more presentations even like this where people can come and learn and uh, we can have more proficient riders that know more about breeding and young horses. What we do the best in this country, or one of the things we do the best, is we have a great infrastructure of competitions. And I keep saying, let's don't make the so cost prohibitive, we have to have a completely different realm of people that are training young horses and so forth. Yes, we do, but we need to interact them. How do we train our young professionals? Well, it's the same way you end up with Grand Prix riders. You, you apprentice uh, with the top Grand Prix riders. We have the best riders, the best trainers, and we have a great infrastructure. And let's don't make it cost prohibitive so that they have to be separate islands. Uh, everybody says, well, let's do the European system. Well, it's not a bad system, for sure. Um, but what really happens there with so many breeders and, and, and so many in it, uh, to bring on your young horses, you basically put a rope around a grass field and at no cost the breeders can come and the riders can jump around some clean rounds and so forth. That's great. Let's, we can't do that here. Um, nor do we want to do that here. We want to be able to use facilities like this, our top facilities in the country. But if we can make it so that it is less cost prohibitive, we can have the young professionals that will be bringing along those young horses part of, of the deal because they're the ones that are going to get not so much from clinics. Clinics are great and, and that's all fine, but it's like finding good course designers. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of people that go to course designing clinics and don't figure it out, but if you, if you um, apprentice behind Guillerme, you figure out pretty quickly how to set courses. And the same thing applies to us. We've got to solve the cost issue, and I think that'll go a long way to get our next group of young professionals. I was just going to follow behind Robert a bit like that. Um, it is. It's like walking behind Guillerme to course design. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have some young riders that I have some nice, they have nice young horses that I'm bringing along. I'm riding in the young classes and helping them and advising them. And I think, I know Shane does, there's a lot of us that if us professionals can give back to, to these younger generation, I think that's really important that, that we um, that have been doing it for so long give back to the younger riders with the young horses and give them the opportunity at the competition so that they can learn how to do this. And I think that that's extremely important that we as older professionals give back to the younger generation. Well, I think one of the missing links for, I mean, really answering the question here, encouraging young American riders to become proficient at working with young horses is it just doesn't happen anymore. I mean, back in the day when I was training Chris Kapler and Thomas Sarah and they were kids, we would show for two weeks and then we would go home and we'd ride all the young horses for two weeks. And then we'd show for two weeks and we'd go home and we'd ride all the young horses. That just simply doesn't happen anymore. I mean, the show schedules nowadays are so demanding that you're showing schools harder. I mean, kids don't have as much time as they used to have. But I mean, when, when you're really developing a rider, it can't just be done at the show. I mean, there has to be time spent at home training, and it has to be, de to truly develop, I believe, top riders, they have to learn how to ride everything, and you have to learn how to break the young horses. And it's just not happening. I mean, it's just, I mean, there, there's very few people that take the time off or that have the knowledge to do it and are really helping develop the young people or the, young, the juniors, so to speak, to make that next step into becoming professionals that are proficient at training young horses. Because it's, it's a much different situation than buying a horse that's trained and taking it to the show ring. I competed with Vanderbilt University as 
student, and I also got the opportunity to compete in Switzerland and Germany with the intercollegiate competition. And those horses that we were riding in Europe were all four-year-olds, and they were amazing. And it seems like in the U.S., all the horses we were riding were broken <laughs> horses that had just been donated. Is there not some way to connect like the young horse program with the intercollegiate program more so that there is That's a very interesting uh, I, I tried that already. So, okay. so my daughter went to UGA and they have a fantastic facility there with a lot of broken down old horses. And I said, why doesn't your veterinary program and your um, uh, horsemanship program get tied together and start developing your own horses? I said, hey, you've got the facility, you've got the property. You know, instead of taking everybody's broken down 15 year old horses that they're looking for a place to live out the rest of their life, breed some nice young horses. You've got the facilities, do it. But it's that they, they, they didn't think that was a good idea. But I, I went to the university, I, I pitched it. <laughs> I think there's also a disconnect between the breeders at a certain age with the horses and when they actually get to these Grand Prix riders, they're somewhere in the middle because the Grand Prix riders don't have the time and they don't usually see the horses can as what, four, maybe five? There's a lot of time in between that that you need to have these young riders. So it, I think it's almost more of how do we get these riders connected with the breeders that are developing these young horses before they get to these Grand Prix riders where you know a lot of that development has already come. I mean, it, it, you need those riders at the younger ages and so the question is, and you're, you're trying to work on a little bit Lisa as well, is how do you get these young riders to be interested in working with these young horses and it, it might just be a specific job as instead of being I want to be a Grand Prix rider and I don't think it's one one or the other maybe you know when you're trying to deal with it in these numbers you point out something that has come up in several of our meetings that's exactly where the disconnect is the breeders to this show ring um, I agree that the a lot of the younger generation lacks discipline but I must say so I'm chairman of the emerging athletes committee and Stephen is um, our this year's winner and that program has absolutely been magic. Uh, yeah, but and that's encouraging to me because so uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, EAP is a, is USHAs. We have ten regionals um, that are around the country. They're taught by people by like Candace and Ann Krasinski and Chris Kapler taught one last year. But there's also a very strong stable management uh, component, which is at least half of what we do. Um, there are 24 kids in each of the 10 regionals, so that's 240 kids a year. Uh, our committee, the application is rather like a college application, isn't it, Stephen? Uh, it's involved, there's, you have to answer questions, you have to have um, recommendations and so on. But what, and we look through all of those um, kids who have applied. They are hardworking kids, they are out there. Um, Stephen is an example, and I have been um, characterized as an eternal optimist, but I do believe there's hope, and that we got to start somewhere, right?